thanks for staying uh, too late. Uh, we'll try to make it uh, concise and uh, interesting as we can. So I will share with you my uh, experience for more than 15 years uh, uh, diagnosing and treating uh, cases uh, of uh, BBV. Uh, BBVV is the most common vestibular disorder. And in our experience, it constitutes uh, almost half of the disease patient in our clinic. Mastering its diagnosis and the management has built my reputation in the field. Repositioning maneuvers are the most successful intervention in the field of vestibular medicine, in my opinion. So diagnosis of BVV, same history, examination, and investigation. For the history, uh, typical history is very common. Uh, and uh, from the history, if the patient is telling you, I feel spinning when lying on my right side on the bed. I think there is no other diseases which can cause vertigo upon lying on the bed to a specific direction. Very, very remote and rare possibility of cases like vertebral basal insufficiency, but in most of the cases, that's a very unique history. So um, postural hypotension, no. It, uh, dizziness occurs when the patient stand up or turn from the bed. But when lying on their back to the bed, Feeling spinning, that's very, very characteristic and very specific to uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. So sometimes from the history, we uh, know to a great extent that this patient has uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Uh, unsteadiness while walking can be the presentation of the horizontal canal BBV. Most of the literature in the text books, especially the NET books, always describes the benign paroxysmal positional vertigo as uh, the one from the posterior canal. But horizontal canal has a little bit more different presentation sometimes. The symptoms are more uh, severe, and uh, the vegetative symptoms know they're vomiting more severe, and sometimes it uh, causes dizziness, lying on the bed, rolling in the bed, turning on the bed, bending the head down, while walking, because in most of the daily movements, lateral canal plane got stimulated. So, and it causes dizziness and vertigo when the patient turns to the right and when the patient turns to the left. So, the presentation of especially the horizontal canal, sometimes it can be presented by just unsteadiness due that some uh, patient, I, I have seen this many times, it just complained of light-headedness. And I, I tell you something, I learned it from uh, failing to diagnose one case. I, I have attended one case and we, uh, in the first examination, I couldn't find any uh, positional nystagmus. Uh, and we checked the blood pressure, he was elderly, uh, uh, hospitalized patient, and we checked the blood pressure, so by in, then uh, in the standing position, there was significant difference. I was happy that's a case of postural hypotension. Then um, the symptoms recur back, and one of my ENT colleagues asked me, please go and check again, and the patient has very robust and very severe benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Then I keep on reading and trying to understand. I discovered something very interesting. You know, when we lie down, uh, so by in, uh, there will be some circulatory changes. And when you stand up against the gravity, so there is some reactions to maintain the circulation against the effect of gravity. Uh, some sort of reflexes occur and the uh, peripheral muscles got contracted to both the uh, blood more to the brain. Ask yourself, what is the part of the body which you feel that you are so buying, then you are standing? Which organ in your body which feels the effect of gravity? You are with the gravity or you are against the gravity? It is the otolith organs. It is the otolith organs, this is the uterical and saccule which tells the body, which tells the brain, no, now we are standing. 
you have to execute some circulatory reflexes. You have to do some changes with the smooth muscles and the peripheral muscles because now we are standing against the gravity and the blood has to be pushed from the legs to the brain higher. So we found that and recently there were some articles uh, um, uh, associating the postural hypotension to the vestibular disorders, especially the otolus uh, dysfunctions. And as you know, in benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, it is a otolus disease. There is some um, uh, degeneration of the otoconial layer in the utricle. So just uh, keep this in mind, because in our experience, the association between postural hypotension and the otolus dysfunction, we found this in many of the cases. More common on the sleeping side, so one of my very uh, short history um, is just you lie on your right on left. Because in 95% of the cases, BBV occurs at the side where the patient used to lie. So if the patient lies on the right side, most probably you will find it in the right side. Left side, left side. So history, you ask for the age, it's more common with the elderly people and the more in females, heat trauma. And we did an unpublished uh, study a few years back. Uh, we have seen many patients with mild to moderate head trauma complaining of vertigo. And uh, surprisingly, most of the vertigo was due to benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. So especially in mild and moderate head trauma, uh, most of those complaining of vertigo, you will find the uh, testing of BBV is positive. Ear symptoms and ear surgery, you are aware of this. Um, other otological diseases, many uh, sudden sensory neural hearing loss, labyrinthitis, migraine, there is a strong correlation between the migraine and the BBV, BBV more common in migraine, and uh, sometimes the uh, migraine uh, causes positional, uh, migraine is positional vertigo and nystagmus, so there is a strong relation. So I, I would want you to think pacemaker, eye surgery, priest surgery, dental procedure, I put this myself, especially the first two. I found it's very common uh, with patient uh, using, uh, have a surgery and they place the best maker. And some of uh, patient who recently did eye surgery and some patient who did a, a, a mastoidectomy because of a breast cancer. Any disease and also on some patient with hemiplegia, any medical conditions which uh, necessitates that the patient lie only on one side most of the time, in no time they develop benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Because normal people, they turn right, left, but those with a pacemaker on the left side, really uh, they feel pain if they lie on the left. So most of the time they lie completely every day all the time on the right. So that's increased the risk of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Some uh, eye surgery, uh, our ophthalmology colleagues, they uh, uh, prohibit the patient from lying in certain side. I don't know the surgeries, but I have seen this many times uh, with them that after this restriction and they being uh, lying only in one side for a few weeks, that's definitely you can expect benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Same for cancer breast. Sometimes they don't feel comfort lying on the operated uh, side. And also for hemiplegia. With dental procedure, yes. And it's not uh, uncommon. That is the dental position during the procedure provokes the attack and the dentist got panic when the patient started to scream uh, because of the vertigo and the dizziness. And the drilling, any kind of skull drill, for any reason, dental, neurosurgery, craniotomy, uh, otology, mastoidectomy. So drilling uh, causes all some sort of uh, trauma and it causes the autoconia to be dislodged from the utricle. Autotoxic medication, yeah, I have seen, and cranial radiotherapy for cancers or something. Uh, we, in our experience also, we found, we expect every time we see a patient referred for autotoxicity monitoring because of gentamicin or aminoglycosides or cisplatin, we expect that we see bilateral vestibular loss. But up till now, most of the patients which we have seen, they have benign paroxysmal positional vertigo because it's a subtle degeneration in the autoconial layer in utricle. So uh, we don't have to have this uh, rigid pattern in our mind, just examine the patient's scene. 
But now I do believe that any kind of autotoxicity, uh, vestibulotoxic uh, medications or cranial, uh, cranial radiation, it also can cause some sort of uh, degeneration of uh, the autoconia. So uh, let me to share with you this, uh, uh, this case. 19 years old young man uh, referred to me after head trauma. Uh, he was diagnosed as uh, trans labyrinthine left temporal bone fracture. Seen few days after the trauma, uh, we uh, did the hearing test and vestibular assessment and it revealed left total hearing and vestibular loss. Then interestingly, we, uh, we found the riot on the healthy side, non-affected side, the riot, posterior canal, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. And surprisingly to me, his main complaint was from the benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, and not from the total unilateral vestibular loss. He's a young man, and the natural compensatory mechanisms occur after the total unilateral vestibular loss. But no habituation occurred for the uh, positional vertigo because it's, uh, it's uh, episodic. The brain can be habituated if regularly exposed to the uh, triggering factors. But uh, it's uh, not expected when it will uh, um, occur the benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. But it was surprising to me that his main complaint was because of the right BBV from posterior canal. And after repositioning, he feels very well. So etiology of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, I like to classify into primary, secondary, and post-traumatic. So primary, there is some risk factors, including old age, osteoporosis, vitamin D deficiency, vertebral basal insufficiency, migraine. Secondary, secondary to autological disease, Meniere's disease, uh, labyrinthitis, vascular autoimmune, or uh, uh, ear disorders or surgery. Post-traumatic, and there is a very uh, uh, specific definition for the post-traumatic BBV that hit trauma, even the minor ones such as domestic injuries, sport injuries, school injuries, and the dental care can trigger autoconial detachment, leading to the development of BBV only labeled post-traumatic if it occurred 24 to 72 hours following the head trauma. So this is uh, the post-traumatic uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Classification is post, uh, the best classification to classify it based on the affected canal. So posterior canal, the most common because it's the most dependent canal with the gravity. So it has a higher chance for precipitating the debris. The lateral canal, which in our series is up to really 25% of the cases. And this is one of the most commonly misdiagnosed cases uh, in other hospitals or uh, clinics because people typically they uh, look for the Dixwell bike, but very few of them, uh, especially in family medicine uh, practice, or this one just who wants to do the uh, McClure Bagnini test. Anterior semicircular canals also, in our experience, is up to 2%. Then multiple canals um, in our um, uh, uh, series is almost about 10%. Uh, so, a diagnosis of BV, history, provoking maneuver, characteristic nystagmus, then some special investigations. So everybody knows the Dixwell bike, and everybody uh, uh, also knows the sideline maneuver, which we call it also the diagnostic CMOT maneuver. Because sometimes some people don't tolerate the Dixwell bike because of uh, uh, cervical spine issues or uh, uh, before of um, biophysical limitations. So uh, this is uh, still a valid maneuver for testing. And if you are an uh, ably man or an ably person, so you do the Dixwell bike. But if you are a Seamont, you prefer Seamonts for repositioning. It's wise uh, to do the side lying. Then if it's positive, just uh, complete the Seamont. And if you are uh, in preference for ably maneuver, just to do the Dixwell bike. If it's positive, just complete the treatment. So uh, provoking manu maneuvers, a Dixwell bike for anterior and posterior canal, side lying also for anterior and posterior canal, heat hanging for lateral canal for anterior canal, and sometimes also uh, used to diagnose especially special cases of posterior canal. Uh, so by enroll, which here I prefer the McClure Bagnini maneuver name uh, because so by enroll is not in uh, that brain. So Bain Roll is in the roll uh, page, and one of the colleagues talk about this in the morning. So the right name to call it Hediao test, because you do like this. So this is a Hediao test. So 
I prefer McClure Bagnini maneuver. Unfortunately, with the cyclop system, they put this name for me. Then the Pauline maneuver, again, it's used to diagnose the horizontal canal BBV or the what's called light cobula or heavy cobula syndrome. Then side lying test for horizontal canal, similar to the Simon uh, side lying for posterior canal, but the head is straight. No uh, 45 degree turning of the head, just keep the head straight, bring the uh, subject to the right 90 degree or to the left 90 degree. So you can have also side lying for the horizontal canal. Having different uh, examination maneuvers is good because sometimes there is physical limitation uh, on the patient. A diagnosis should be related to the evoked nystagmus and not to the maneuver which elicits it. So sometimes horizontal canal or anterior canal show in the dexual pike. So it's not uh, just um, uh, feeling vertigo or having uh, nystagmus, but having a characteristic nystagmus which points to uh, affected ca specific canal. So the diagnosis should be based on the characteristics of nystagmus, not on the uh, evoking maneuver. Both excitatory inhibitor stimuli of each canal are linked to a typical uh, nystagmus. As every vestibular stimulus triggered by each ambulatory deflection provokes a contraction of a couple of extrinsic uh, ocular muscles, generating typical eye movement and characteristic nystagmus. And in the morning, we have uh, one presentation explaining this. So I will skip these slides. This is uh, some model we use it uh, to explain the relation between the different semicircular canals and, uh, and the extraocular eye muscles. Just I will share with you some videos. Unfortunately, this video is uh, uh, quality is not uh, good. But as you see, it's uh, from a posterior canal BBV uh, from uh, uh, right uh, uh, dexual pike. Uh, it's upbeating torsional uh, nystagmus. I think is this is uh, was recorded from uh, Cyclops system, and you want you to observe something. Uh, what do you observe? There is a lot of eye makeup, right? Yeah, there is mascara and uh, the eyelashes. With other systems, I used to have difficulty. But honestly, with the Cyclops system, as you see, I can get uh, clear uh, capturing of the pupil and the eyes without uh, any effort or without interference. So that is, uh, was the McClure Bagnini test. We started by uh, neutral position, so by and then turning the head to uh, right lateral position. You can see there is a right beating, right beating, uh, 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 torsional, right beating mainly uh, geotropic nystagmus on the right head lateral position. Then uh, after the nystagmus subside or after 30 or 40 seconds, we, we, we complete the sequence, we bring the head back to the subayan neutral position. Yeah, then finally, uh, we bring the head to the left lateral position. So I want you to tell this is a case of right or left horizontal canal BBV. So now we are in the neutral position, so uh, we'll wait, uh, turning the head to the left and uh, please observe. Just compare the strength of nystagmus between the head lateral position and the left lateral position. Yes. Ah, so this is was a left lateral horizontal canal or right horizontal canal BBV? Left, sure. This is geotropic type of uh, and left uh, horizontal canal BBV. Good. So this is actually from a recent uh, uh, patient. Uh, interestingly, she is a young lady, 30 plus or something, and her habit of sleeping to lie on her face. And she started to complain of uh, dizziness for two, three weeks. 
And the only examination uh, we, on the uh, right Dixwell Pike, uh, we recorded this. Just uh, uh, concentrate because she keep on blinking, so it's a little bit challenging to appreciate uh, the nystagmus. And the Cyclops system also recorded with the Cyclops system. So with the Cyclops system, you start by uh, uh, turning the head to the right 45 degree in the sitting. Uh, then after 30 seconds or something, you bring the patient on the supine. So on bringing the patient to supine, just try to concentrate and see if there is any kind of nystagmus. You see any nystagmus? There is down peating with uh, uh, torsional element towards the left. Because she's blinking is a little bit hard, but if you focus, you will see a few beats. Can you see now? Yes. yes. So this is interestingly in posterior canal BBV and in anterior canal BBV, the torsion uh, directs you to the affected side. So because of the torsional component here was towards the left. Our diagnosis was left anterior canal BBV. And interestingly, for anterior canal BBV, uh, the presentation will be more robust in the right duxal pike. So the right duxal pike will show very well the right posterior canal BBV and the left anterior canal BBV. And we did for hair repositioning. And uh, next week, uh, we, we, we checked here. There was convergence to the horizontal canal. And we successfully, we could treat it, uh, and now she is cleared. But interestingly, she, her habit, she sleep on her face. So maybe this is, was a, a reason. Then uh, next point is bilaterally symptomatizing uh, PPV. So horizontal canal symptomized on the right and left. Anterior canal also gives symptoms on the right and uh, left. And it gives a positive dexual bike. Uh, with vertical nystagmus on both uh, sides, but is uh, the nystagmus, the torsional component, it will be down beating with the torsional component beating towards the affected ear. Like our previous case, it was a left anterior canal BBV because torsional component was beating towards the left. Then pseudo bilateral uh, posterior canal BBV, then true bilateral BBV. In our clinic, we have a rapid access clinic, so we see many patients from uh, emergency department. And uh, we are a tertiary care hospital, so we have a lot of uh, head trauma cases. So what makes um, multiple canal and bilateral canal a little bit higher in our uh, series, that we see a lot of uh, post-traumatic, uh, post-head trauma cases. So this is uh, uh, our protocol. Uh, to differentiate between uh, pseudo bilateral and the true bilateral. So, if you have bilaterally positive dexual bike test, uh, either it will be one side is more symptomatizing or both sides are equal symptoms and nystagmus. So, if you have one side more symptomatizing, just it reads the most symptomatizing side, then if the nystagmus and symptoms are cleared after treatment, that is a case of pseudo bilateral uh, BBV. But if after treating the symptomizing side, the other side is still symptomatic and still shows nystagmus, that must be a true uh, bilateral posterior canal BBV, and you have to treat the uh, other side. Then, if you have equal symptom and nystagmus, just do head hanging maneuver, just a head extension in the neutral plane. So, if you get a torsional nystagmus, that means uh, it will be beating towards the affected ear. And that means a case of pseudo bilateral BBV treats the uh, side where the torsional nystagmus beats toward this end. If you have a purely vertical nystagmus, and why purely vertical nystagmus? Imagine that is the right ear has up beating uh, anti clockwise uh, nystagmus, and the left ear has uh, up beating clockwise nystagmus. So the clockwise and the clockwise components will cancel each other. So the torsional components will cancel each other, and only you have a purely vertical nystagmus. In this case, it will be a true bilateral uh, Benenberg Zizman positional vertigo, and you either you do Simont maneuver for both sides simultaneously, or just do Ibli maneuver on uh, consequent sides. So because in Ibli maneuver, if you treated one side, when you wanted to treat the other side, really, um, it will 
affect the, the treated site. But in safety maneuver, uh, there is no such in, uh, um, interference. So either you choose you uh, do cement for both ears at the same session, or uh, uh, just do Ibli for one side, then after a few days you do the Ibli maneuver for the two sides. And in our experience, post uh, 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 protocol, they work uh, very well. So multiple canal BBV, the most common is a mixed combination between horizontal and posterior canal BBV. It's the most common form of mixed canal BBV involved canals may be on the same or on the opposite sides. Uh, diagnosis based on the features of nystagmus on either maneuvers, dexoval bike or supine roll. In most mixed cases, the horizontal nystagmus is geotropic or abogeotropic. I will show you some videos, uh, but for the horizontal canal, you have uh, nystagmus on the right, which got reversed when the head to the left. So there is a tool to get sure of the involvement of the horizontal canal. That is the nystagmus is bi-positional and reversible, either geotropic or abogeotropic. So if you have a right beating nystagmus on the right side, when you test the left side, it will, uh, it will give a, a, a left beating nystagmus. But horizontal, but posterior canal only on the affected side. So there is a way to double check if horizontal canal involved or no. So you do the dexual bike, then you do the subayan uh, yao test or maclure bagdini test. If you have the typical uh, bi-directional, bi-positional uh, nystagmus of horizontal canal, that makes you sure of the involvement of the horizontal canal. So please watch uh, uh, this video. And give me your comments. Uh, can you see? Yeah, very strong, uh, upbeating, uh, torsional component. Then what happened? Yes. So the upbeating, upbeating torsional component uh, followed. Um, uh, was trans and then followed by a more prolonged uh, horizontal component to the right side. So this is, and when we do the uh, maclure bagnini test, there was a reversible horizontal component uh, on the other side. So we get sure this is a case of mixed, posterior and horizontal canal. Good. So in the next, uh, ah, we have another one. Good. So let's, um, this is recorded by the Cyclops system and uh, give me your comments, because I think this is uh, one of the interesting videos you might uh, watch. So this is what the right Dexwell bike test. So first is the head turn it to the right 45 degree, then after uh, some time we bring the head uh, into the supine uh, position. Okay. Yes, please uh, concentrate. There is some tricks here. Yes, yes. Just watch, please, because this is uh, really one of the interesting videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Still, still the story didn't end. <laughs> yes. So what happened? We have very strong upbeating torsion and stagmas. Then it was followed by a down beating in nystagmus. Uh, this is uh, one of the colleagues presented a similar case and he uh, labeled it as central. Simply because of this is strong nystagmus, it has a repound nystagmus on the opposite side. If the cobula become uh, uh, robustly uh, tilted or um, uh, moved, so there will be some repound. 
So this is was the repound. It wasn't anterior canal, but it was repound for the strong uh, nystagmus from the posterior canal because of uh, the markedly deflected copula of the right posterior semicircular canal. So if uh, strong deflection, it will be inhibited by some sort of repound. So you get this, uh, uh, this rebound nystagmus followed by lift peating horizontal nystagmus. This is, was a case of severe posterior canal BBV in association with apogeotropic horizontal canal. And we cleared the patient uh, in one or two sessions completely. So we are sure from uh, the diagnosis. But again, your trick that is always for the horizontal canal, you can double check the reversal of the nystagmus on the McClure Bagnini test. And for your knowledge, any strong nystagmus always has a repound opposite direction nystagmus, even in caloric test. So if you observe, you are you're still doing the caloric test. If uh, you have very strong uh, hyper excitable caloric uh, response, wait a little few minutes, you will have spontaneously a reverse direction uh, nystagmus. It's called the rebound nystagmus. So if you have a mixed posterior and lateral canal BBV, which canal you uh, treat first? There is two schools. One school telling, uh, treat the posterior canal first as it is the reservoir for otoconia because it's the most dependent and most of the otoconia precipitate in it. As other school telling, if uh, treat the lateral canal or horizontal canal first, because it's usually more symptomatic. And I do believe both of them, they uh, work. Uh, uh, mixed posterior and the lateral uh, canal, which canal is the same? Huh? Ah, mixed anterior and lateral canal BBV. If you have uh, anterior and lateral canal BBV, which canal would you treat first? I have a, mix, a case of mixed anterior and lateral canal BBV. So which canal you treat first? Horizontal. Yes, correct. Why? Why? Because it is associated so many, with so much neurovegetative symptoms. It is very uh, troublesome for the patient. And anterior canal by Correct, and the other reason that simply anterior canal has a chance of self-clearance, and it happened many times. So I would treat also the horizontal canal first. Ah, okay, yeah, still uh, two more, or? Yes, uh, this is uh, one of the places where I work. I work in many uh, clinics. So they don't have a VNEG system, they just have uh, all the video, uh, 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 video and stagnography camera, and uh, I captured with my mobile. Listen, that's because I put here because if you can see, there is uh, uh, vertical upbeating in stagnus. So it's very common that is people get confused. If you have a spontaneous vertical upbeating in stagnus, that means central, and uh, you have to do imaging or to refer to a neurologist. But Many uh, normal people, or uh, those with uh, smokers, or those with migraine, sometimes they have a vertical upbeating nystagmus, uh, seven degrees or less at positional testing. So it's a different. If you see spontaneous upbeating uh, nystagmus, that means mostly a prenistem or high prenistem problem. Uh, but if you find uh, vertical upbeating nystagmus on positional uh, testing in dextral bike or uh, head hanging or supine, that's sometimes a normal uh, finding, uh, more common with uh, those uh, smokers. And in our experience also, it's more common in migrainer. So this is uh, uh, with vision denied, which yani means in dark. So we don't uh, take it a very significant. But if you find spontaneous vertical operating nystagmus, this is a, a very strong uh, red flag and it should be investigated. And I think that case was uh, a spontaneous uh, vertical operating nystagmus. It seems out to be uh, multiple sclerosis, as I remember. There is a new, uh, yes, I have been asked by uh, respected colleagues that is a poet. He was testing one patient for horizontal canal and she was, uh, it was geotropic, then spontaneously it became apogeotropic. Simply, 
the concept of cobulolithysis, in my opinion, now is a little bit changing. Uh, because cobulolithysis concept, that is the autoconia is adherent to the cobula. But uh, which makes more sense is that is the matter of the short arm and the long arm. So if the autoconia is here, it causes apogeotropic nystagmus. If the autoconia here, it will cause this geotropic nystagmus. And this is easily explained the conversion. I believed in this uh, theory simply because I have seen the spontaneous conversion. Um, uh, uh, if it's uh, in the short arm, if it's uh, uh, moved the autoconia and become in the long arm or non-ambulatory uh, ambulatory arm, so spontaneous conversion can happen. This is explains your question because it shouldn't be cobula says doesn't mean adherent to the cobula, but it just could be it is in the uh, short arm of the canal. Because if the autoconia is here, it will give you a cobulolithesis finding. If the autoconia is here, it will give you a geotropic. So just moving the autoconia from the short arm of the canal to the long arm can simply cause a spontaneous conversion of the nystagmus. There is a new uh, variant, there is a few papers on it, it's called apogeotropic variant of the posterior canal. Personally, I have two or three cases presented with just a very strong torsional nystagmus on the dexohol bike test, but uh, with a reversed uh, direction of torsion. So you expect it to be to, um, like the torsional component towards the affected ear, uh, of posterior canal, but I found it in the opposite direction. So the theory it goes that it's either um, uh, the autoconia will be here or in the common cross. So that's why sometimes uh, you got uh, 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 presentation similar to the anterior canal or the direction of torsion. Everything is typical except the direction of torsion is uh, reversed. But still, uh, only a few articles published on uh, this concept. How to determine the affected side of the horizontal canal? Yes, intensity of nystagmus. In geotropic, it's more stronger in the affected side. In abogeotropic variant, it's weaker on the affected side. Pseudo-spontaneous nystagmus. Uh, in geotropic variant, it will be beating towards the healthy side. And the, in the abogeotropic type, it will be beating towards the affected side. Also, uh, setting to, to subayan, uh, test, uh, the nystagmus will be uh, the same like pseudo-spontaneous nystagmus. Uh, um, Heat pending nystagmus, affected side uh, on geotropic, uh, and uh, beating, the nystagmus will be beating to the healthy side in abogeotropic. Null point more common in the abogeotropic. Just uh, here we have to uh, give a hint that sometimes this abogeotropic variant or even the geotropic, uh, sometimes I heard from the colleagues that they have cases which never respond to the treatment. Those cases, we call them, we label them as light cobula and heavy cobula. So in light cobula, it gives you uh, this geotropic nystagmus, and in heavy cobula syndrome, it gives you uh, uh, um, uh, abogeotropic type. It's similar to the alternating alcohol nystagmus, because, you know, alcohol goes first, get absorbed in the cobula. So at the beginning, it causes uh, light cobula syndrome, so it causes geotropic nystagmus. After a few hours after clearance from the cobula and going to the endolymph, it become more, uh, the cobula will become relatively heavier than the endolymph. So the direction of nystagmus will get uh, reversed. Uh, light cobula can happen with migraine, and most of the cases uh, in our experience and also in the literature, it always gives either geotropic or abogeotropic. So if you have a case of horizontal canal BBV, uh, which is not responding to maneuvers, and you did the uh, MRI and it was free, <coughs> think about the light cobula syndrome, and the most common cause of light cobula syndrome is migraine. So give the treatment for migraine. Uh, just a few tips, just uh, two slides left. Uh, I give you a few tips for treating successful treatment of BBV. Uh, when you are doing Ibley maneuver, it, this maneuver uh, works mainly with the gravity. So giving more time, especially in the, um, uh, when you bring the head down, just I give it two minutes. I give time for the gravity to work and for the debris to move. If you make it very fast, 30 seconds, um, sometimes this is a cause of not being successful. 
same also in the uh, uh, when you turn the body to the other side. I keep it for two minutes again to give uh, more time for the autoconia uh, to go to the common uh, cross. So uh, just the timing, because this maneuver uh, depends on the gravity. So please give the gravity time uh, to occur. One more tip for the Ibli, always keep the head um, in position. Uh, when uh, at the final step bringing the patient to, patient to the sitting, uh, keep the head turned, because that's a prevent immigration or conversion to the horizontal canal. For cement maneuver, the secret for its success just to uh, uh, bring the head more down. So instead of 180 degrees, just make it 210. Just um, uh, in the initial position, make the head more down. Then also in the uh, second position, make the head also more down. So just um, make the curve more, not only 180, but 210 or 200 plus. That improves. The other thing in our uh, protocol, we repeat the maneuver, but at least 10 minutes apart. Because if you repeat immediately, uh, you uh, just disturb what you fixed before. So at least uh, we wait for 10 minutes, uh, but we believe, as also uh, the literature suggests, that they're repeating the maneuver one more time. Especially sometimes if the patient first time to receive the treatment, they don't know what will happen. They are not very cooperative, they are panicked, they are afraid. So sometimes I find the second time more convenient for the physician and also more comfortable to the patient. So uh, that's what we do. Uh, so usually we start with Ibli, then if, we f if it failed, we do cement maneuver. And if failed, we use a, a vibrator. I use a massage vibrator, but I have to share with you, there is a contraindication for the use of vibrator. If your patient has a retinal detachment, please don't use the vibrator. It can worsen his condition. So the use of a skull vibrator is contraindicated if the patient has a retinal detachment. Uh, maneuvers of horizontal canal, we use Number one, the forced prolonged positioning maneuver. This is our favorite, and we always got a very good result with it. So just we force the patient to lie on the healthy side, uh, or the uh, uh, healthy side for uh, many hours as he can, at least uh, 10 to 12 hours for two successive nights. And sometimes we combine it with geophony maneuver. We find it more easy to do for the patient. Uh, and sometimes we we'll do the barbecue or the log roll, but both Jufani and the barbecue, it doesn't work from one treatment. Sometimes you have to repeat many times to work. So we combine many times of Jufani or uh, barbecue, and uh, uh, as well as the forced prolonged positioning maneuver. Forced prolonged positioning maneuver is a standard in all the patients with horizontal canal. Interestingly, especially for abogeotropic type, if the autoconia in the utricular side, sometimes uh, if they lie on the hill side, it doesn't clear. So you have to lead them to lie for one night or two nights on the uh, uh, affected side, then after that, return back. So don't be very stubborn. If the patient didn't clear by lying on, uh, on the side you suggested for two nights, just reverse his position. Uh, sometimes it work uh, very well. Uh, so there is many, uh, um, the mechanism like in barbecue and bread uh, and uh, asprella maneuver, they use the angular acceleration and the negative inertia. Geophony maneuver, it uses linear acceleration and the positive inertia. Uh, and forced prolonged positioning maneuver uses gravitational uh, sedm uh, sedimentation. For anterior canal, we mainly do a deep heat hanging maneuver. And I do believe if you turn it the head towards the affected side, like in Duxwell bike, sometimes it gives a better results. Um, it's all the same, deep heat hanging, deep heat, Duxwell bike or lean. Uh, reverse it Simont or reverse it Ibli maneuver sometimes work for them. But uh, our standard of care is the deep heat hanging uh, maneuver. Thank you very much.